G'day guys, Nick here from CPAT Reviews. It's great to be with you. Firstly, a little shout out to all my incredible subscribers. Thanks for supporting the channel. Uh, if you're new to sleep apnea and CPAP therapy, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, and that way I'll keep you up to date on the wonderful world of CPAP. Now, today I'm gonna to do a little video on humidification. It's a really important aspect of CPAP therapy and one that I think a lot of people get confused with. Well, I know they do because I get a whole lot of emails every winter. I thought I'd do a little video just explaining what uh, humidified air is. So a little bit about the science behind it to give you a bit of an understanding and also talk about CPAP humidifiers and the problems people have with them and the benefits of them as well. So humidified air is basically just normal air with moisture in it. Obviously when the water heats up, uh, it turns to vapor and then that vapor gets carried in the air. So one thing about humidified air is the hotter the air is, the more moisture content it can hold as vapor. All right, so if you've been to anywhere uh, in the tropics, normally they have quite humid air, it's quite dense air, it's full of a lot of moisture uh, vapor in the air. Now, the colder the air gets, the less moisture it can hold in the air. And that's how we kind of get rain at the end of the day. And it also leads to a phenomenon in CPAP therapy called rain out, which I'll talk about later. But basically, yeah, the colder that air gets, the less moisture content it can hold in the air. So it's important to understand those two aspects of humidity. So why do we actually need a humidifier with CPAP therapy any, anyway? Well, under normal circumstances, your nose, so just normal natural breathing, your nose here acts as a humidifier, believe it or not. So as we breathe in through our nose, as that air travels through our nasal cavity and, in, and down into our upper respiratory and then down into our lungs, our nose actually warms up the air and makes breathing more comfortable and it just protects the soft, delicate linings of you know your upper respiratory tract, your throat, your nasal cavity, your lungs, and so forth. So your nose is acting as a humidifier under normal circumstances. But when we start using CPAP therapy, that increased airflow through the nose overwhelms the nose's natural ability to provide humidification. It's like hanging your washing out on a windy day. It just dries everything out, okay? so. That air is moving too fast for the nose to be able to heat it up and add a bit of moisture to it. And because of that, we get a few uh, side effects happening there. So firstly, we get dryness. We can get dryness in our nose, in our throat. We get sore throats. We can get cracked lips. We can get infections, blood noses. There's a whole bunch of sort of nasty little consequences that happen when we're using positive airway pressure, if we're not going to use a humidifier. Now it doesn't happen to everyone, but majority of people who don't use a humidifier report these sort of side effects, just because the body's natural ability is overwhelmed by the amount of airflow. Now, another thing that happens is because the, the air pressure is so high, as it passes through the nose and it dries it out, it causes congestion. The congestion is basically a shrinking of the airway pressure passages in the nose. So the diameter of your nasal passages becomes narrow. You would have had blocked noses before. That's congestion. You know, it's, it's hard to breathe in. So that cold, dry air that's passing through our nose causes the congestion. And if your nasal passages shrink, it's harder to get air in through your nose. So we end up breathing a lot more through our mouth. So we get mouth leaks. We end up breathing through our mouth because we can't get the air in through our nose. And what that does, it sort of increases the dryness even more because instead of being able to get that air through our humidifier, our nose, uh, we end up bringing it in through our mouth, which isn't a humidifier. And so the air is a lot more dry even more. So it's sort of just like a negative feedback cycle. It just increases that dryness even more. All right, guys, now I'm gonna quickly talk about CPAP humidifiers, what they are, how they work, and also how to change some of those settings that are gonna help you out with your CPAP humidification. So for those of you new to CPAP therapy, a CPAP humidifier is basically a little water chamber that sits on a heater plate, and we can control that heater plate with the settings. So the higher that heater plate gets, the hotter that gets, then the more moisture content's created, the more humidification we get in the air. So if we're getting a dry throat, maybe we're getting you know dry mouth, uh, sore nose, struggling to breathe through our nose, we need to add a bit of moisture to the air. 
So you can check your humidification settings on your machine and you can increase those settings to provide more humidification, which is gonna alleviate some of those symptoms associated with the dryness. Now, one issue that you're probably gonna run into at some stage with your CPAP therapy, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this now, is a little dilemma we call rain out, which is when that nice warm humidified air starts condensating and starts turning into water droplets, which can gather in your tube and start gurgling. Uh, they can be spitting on your face. And it's just a really annoying aspect of CPAP therapy. So what's happening in this scenario is, remember in the beginning of the video, I said that cold air can't hold a lot of moisture. Yeah, really hot air can hold a lot of moisture, cold air can't. So when air gets cold, it gets rid of its moisture content, it condensates and we get those water droplets. If we're getting water droplets building up in our tube, we can either increase the air temperature so that air can hold more moisture or we can reduce the level of moisture in the air. So decreasing the humidification settings. It's a bit of a balancing act and I think this is where people get really stuck because they don't quite understand how it all fits together, okay? so. Now, each CPAP manufacturer has its own humidification system. And some of you with the more high-end machines might have an integrated heated tube system with your device. If you don't have an integrated heated tube system with your device, I highly recommend that you go out and get yourself uh, this little device here, which is called a universal Hibernite heated tube system. They're not that expensive and basically that will enable you to add a heated tube to your humidifier no matter what machine you've got. It's really great. Another thing I recommend you get is a little tube wrap. This is just an insulated tube cover that you can wrap around your tube. Basically it's got a zip and you put your tube in here and that adds another level of insulation to your CPAP tube and that's going to keep that cold air off your tube and that way keep that air inside the tube nice and warm and the warmer the air the more water we can add to the air the more humidification if you have an integrated heated tube system built into your machine already you're probably going to have two different settings you can run with your machine one will be like an automatic climate control setting where when you're changing that humidification setting the level of water it'll automatically be adjusting the tube temperature for you. The other one will be more of a manual mode. And in that scenario, basically we can determine the level of humidification independently of the heated tube. So we can control A, the, how hot that heater plate's getting, and B, how hot that tube's getting. So this is gonna give you more control. Um, because those auto settings, they're, they're great for most of the time, but sometimes you, you wanna have that control of that heated tube independently of your, uh, your humidifier. So in a scenario where, let's just say we're very dry, so we need a lot of moisture in the air, we need a high humidity level, but we're also getting a lot of rain out, we're getting a lot of condensation happening, which is annoying the crap out of us. In that scenario, we don't, really wanna drop our water content, our humidification level, because it's just gonna remove the moisture that we need. So what we've gotta do in that scenario is we've gotta heat up the air. And we've gotta heat that up so that air can hold that amount of moisture in it and keep it as vapor. And to do that, we have gotta crank up that heated tube system if we've got one, okay? So crank up the heated tube system, wrap it in a tube cozy, which is gonna keep the cold atmospheric air off the tube. Um, maybe keep it under our blanket as well. We can do that. We could heat our room temperature. All right, heating our room temperature as well. Just create, just take the chill off the room with a little bit of a heater. Um, keep our machine nice and low to the ground so that if we do get a little bit of condensation, it's gonna run back down into the water tank. If you've got it on the bedside table and you're getting a bit of a bend in your tube, you're gonna get condensation building up in a little bit of a U there and it'll pull and create gurgling noises. And, and they're the sort of sort of things we can do. You've also got to remember that conditions change. So as we go through the seasons, the level of ambient humidity in the air, the natural water content in the air changes as well. So in winter time, when it is cold, the air is normally really, really dry. So because it's cold, yeah, it can't hold that water content. So with that dry air, we're going to get a lot more dryness in our throat and in our 
in our nose and so forth. We're going to get, you know, those sort of symptoms that I talked about before. So it's a little bit of a conundrum there because in wintertime, when it's driest, the air's driest, and we need more moisture, that's when we're going to have those those issues because we want to have that humidification to alleviate the dryness. So that's where these sort of things come into play. And that's where you need to learn how to uh, adjust your tube temperature as well as your humidification levels. So change it out of automatic into manual mode. Uh, watch some of my tutorials depending on what machine you've got because normally I talk about that in the clinical setting. So if you've got a Dream Station, an AirSense 10, you know, a Fisher and Pike or Sleep Style, whatever it is, um, you can change it to manual mode and then you have more control over your settings. That's pretty much it today. I hope you enjoyed my little science lesson. <laughs> um, humidification, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. So, but very, very important for, for a lot of you. So make sure you play around with it and, and have, a, have a good crack. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll leave it at that. We're still in stage four lockdowns here in Melbourne. Our numbers are coming down, but we've still got the curfew in place and, and only a few, few essential businesses open. And we're only allowed to go out for an hour a day to get a bit of exercise. And I might go for a run soon because it's a, a lovely day outside. But anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a thumbs up and hit the like button if you did. And also, yeah, I'd love, uh, love it if you subscribe to the channel. And I love all your comments and feedback. So if you do have a question, um, you know, if you got, need help with your humidification system or you're running into some troubles, just uh, drop me a comment and I'll, I'll do my best to give you a chop out. All right, signing out. Have a great day and sleep well. Cheers.